Holiday model is a simple model for homologous recombination. While it is now clear that most recombination events involve synthesis of new DNA, a feature absent from this model, the Holiday model is still useful for understanding recombination. When you have completed this exercise, you should understand how strand invasion can create a holiday junction, understand how branch migration leads to recombination, and understand the differences between the two possible modes of holiday junction resolution. To visualize homologous recombination using the holiday model, it is useful to first picture two homologous double-stranded DNA molecules aligned with one another. These DNA duplexes may carry different alleles of the same gene. In the first step of the holiday model, single-strand NICs form at identical positions in each DNA duplex. DNA strands near the NIC sites peel away from their complementary strands and base pair with the homologous duplex. This step is called strand invasion. The DNA intermediate in which two DNA duplexes are connected by crossing DNA strands is called a holiday junction. Remember, since the duplexes are identical, or nearly identical in sequence, each of the NIC strands is able to base pair with the uncleaved strand on the opposite duplex. The holiday junction can move along the DNA by repeated melting and formation of base pairs. Each time the junction moves, base pairs are broken in the parental DNA molecules, and identical base pairs are formed in the recombination intermediate. This process is called branch migration. Different alleles of the same gene carry small sequence differences. During branch migration through these regions of sequence difference, DNA duplexes are formed carrying one or a few sequence mismatches. These regions are called heteroduplex DNA. The final step of DNA recombination is cleavage of the holiday junction to regenerate two separate DNA duplexes. This process is called resolution. To aid in the visualization of this step, the holiday junction is rotated to give a square planar structure with no crossing strands. Resolution can occur at one of two possible sites. Cleavage at each of these sites results in a different genetic outcome. One of the possible cut sites is in the pair of strands that remained uncut during the first step of recombination. These strands can be easily identified because they each consist of a single color at this point in the model. The resulting duplexes are called splice recombination products because the two original duplexes are now spliced together with the DNA sequences flanking the site of recombination swapped. This may not be obvious in the short stretches of DNA shown, but should become clearer in the context of longer DNA duplexes. The resulting duplexes now carry one pair of alleles from one parent, a region of heteroduplex DNA, and the pair of alleles from the other parent. Since the C alleles have switched from one duplex to the other, these products are also called crossover products. The second possible cut site occurs in the pair of strands that were nicked during the first step of recombination. These strands can be easily identified because they each consist of a mix of colors at this point in the model. The resulting duplexes are called patch recombination products because they contain a patch of hybrid DNA. Since the A and C alleles are still present together on one of the product DNA duplexes, these products are also called non-crossover products. How well do you